Hello, Super Nerd friends. It is Saturday evening, and I uh, feel like I don't have much to say, but let's jump right in. It's a good thing. Remember what day it is. It's a good way to start a video. I really hope it's Saturday. That would be awkward. But uh, anyway, yeah, analyzing things is really cool. I like analyzing things, as you know, as I said. Uh, but yeah, I was talking to you just now on the phone a few seconds ago that uh, I, like, I, I, uh, I don't like... I don't really like Shakespeare until I get to know him through his poem or his play or whatnot. And I'm like, this is so well made and so interesting. And now I understand the history of it and it's really cool. Like, I think my favorite Shakespeare play is Richard III. And if you hadn't studied it, there's like really no reason why that would ever be your favorite. Like, that I can think of. It's just like, like I don't know, it's dramatic and history-y. A lot of them are, so you have to really get to know them on an individual level before it's like, this is actually quite excellent. Oh, and Titus Andronicus. That's another good one. <laughs> Best your mama joke ever, except for, I think it probably ties with uh, um, the Blue Spies in the Meet the Spy video. Just like a very classily executed your mama joke. But, uh, yeah, and, and I forgot you guys met my dad a couple times. I completely forgot that. You're like, yeah, I like I like your dad and your relationship. Like, how do you know? Wait, oh, right, because we had dinner with him, like, twice. Uh, but yeah, I, I love when people are really into their job. That's why musicians are always, like, really, like, sexy and charismatic and, like, you're drawn to them because they're, like, always really into it. But, uh, yeah, universities and I think, uh, like, the entertainment industry, which... I guess, like, uh, it really depends on, like, with actresses and directors, I guess. I don't know, you don't really hear from the directors as much unless you watch, like, the extended cuts or something. But, um, like, I've never, like, seen an interview or anything with, like, an animator or any of, like, the tech people where they're not like, oh my gosh, our jobs are so cool. It's like all those people at Pixar and DreamWorks that are, like, so into their jobs, which is really cool. Neat. But, and then, like, uh, Sciencey people, like with the really specialized jobs, like uh, like NASA people. Who at NASA doesn't love their job? I had a a chemistry teacher in high school who uh, like retired early because I got an offer for some kind of job at NASA. It was really cool. But uh, yeah, I think it'd be really fun to visit you guys over the summer. There are a lot of people I want to visit. Uh, just kind of in general, like there's two people in Arizona. Which one of them might be moving to the East Coast? I think one might be moving to, back to California for the summer, maybe. This hand's getting tired, so I'm gonna switch. That's better. Hopefully the video isn't upside down, though I don't really understand how uh, that works. Like, it just kinda knows which way's up and down. Like, if I do this, does it go with me or am I upside down? I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> the rest of the video's gonna be upside down, maybe. Oh well, it's going to, uh, deal with it. But, uh, but yeah, I don't know, like, with, with grad school moving expenses, maybe? I'm not sure if that's a viable thing, or if I'll even have time. But, uh, I don't know. About the future being now, I, uh, really like your points about, like, us being really wasteful. And it's, like, and just kind of the progress of technology in general, like, it's something, speaking of my dad, that I talk with him about, because he's a computer software designer, and, um, kind of a sci-fi nerd in general, and he's really into English and history, and something we talked about is that we sort of, as a species, have had the capability of making the technologies that we've had, just like in the last, not this century, but like the last century for a while now, and we just never did. And one of the things we've come up with, or that has been come up with, but that we really like, being uh, English nerds, uh, is that, like, literature and sci-fi and pop culture is what really spurred on the advance of technology. Like, he likes to say that Star Trek invented the cell phone, and Star Wars invented the, uh, like, the automatic closing door at, uh, supermarkets. Because we've been able to make those for a lot longer than you'd probably think, but why would you make it unless you had some kind of inspiration or something kind of, like, urging you on? So... Our theory is that it's kind of a symbiotic relationship between, like, people suddenly 
having this uh, widened horizon of imagination and thinking like, wow, you know, I saw that thing that was just so far-fetched in that TV show when I was like six years old and uh, now I'm an adult and I can actually make that, so why don't we try and why don't we try to make it better than that? Try to do the next step. So that sounds I'd say the future is now or it was like last um, century and we're kind of ca catching up to ourselves in a way. But, uh, but yeah, dumps have always existed, but we just have more of it now. But uh, we also have more stuff now. And, I don't know, just a historically unprecedented amount of luxury, even just for, like, middle-class level lifestyle. Um, it's gonna come with a price tag. Always. Like, no matter what you do. Just like, uh, you know, going back and living in caves would also have a price tag. It just would be a different one. Um, you know, right now it's mostly to the environment and to resources and to the people working at the bottom of the heap, making it all kind of work, down underground in the dark, making the big wheels turn. Uh, but I don't think history repeats, um, but it certainly does modulate, and I don't know, but I don't know if it's fair to say that the future isn't now, just because, um, or it might be, maybe it's a disservice to say the future isn't now. Ah, uh, just because, or it's doing, it's doing us, it's doing someone a disservice, maybe. Or just a variation in how we define that phrase, uh, to say the future isn't now, because history is cumulative, and because new problems create, um, or new problems come from new inventions and stuff like that, like, uh, the story that I, I loved hearing was very charming, somehow, in, in a weird way, but, uh, Way back when people used carriages, they thought that society was going to crumble and everything was going to come to an end because uh, everyone was up to their ears in horse crap all the time. They didn't know what to do with it. They thought, well, that's it. Like, we're just going to have to go back and live in caves because we don't have to deal with this problem. And then suddenly, almost miraculously, someone uh, invented the automobile. So, <laughs> modulation. And it's all just a matter of coming up with new stuff and figuring out how to fix the new problems that come with it. And, uh, it's not a bad thing necessarily, it's just, uh, that things change. Yay! Something I, uh, end up talking a lot about whenever I tell someone I want to be a librarian. They're like, but aren't libraries kind of going extinct? It's like, well, I guess they might, if you're thinking libraries, in a very strict kind of old-fashioned-y sense, in the sense that, like, they're kind of like monasteries that house little paper things. But, um, you know, there aren't as many monasteries around as they used to, and we have different ways of handling technology now. It's not necessarily a bad thing, it's just a different thing. And, uh, the march on of progress. <laughs> march of differentness. Which isn't really all that different. It just has a different color filter on it. I was talking about Alexis. The future is blue. Because, uh... I don't know, whenever you look at sci-fi movies, it's always kind of blue, or maybe green, depending on the feel. Like, The Matrix is green, the movies, because uh, it's future -y, but it's also kind of, like, weird and off. But, like, when you're actually in The Matrix, it's kind of green, but outside it's blue, because it's the future, but it's not in The Matrix. Anyway, so that's enough. Oh. There we go. If it was upside down, we'll end the video with me right side up, and I can see the, uh, the time is right side up, so it's 8.51. I'm going to stop and sign out and go to bed. Right. Bye.